Hi everyone, welcome to yet another episode of On The Avenue. I hope you've been enjoying this season as much as I've been enjoying being your host. Okay, quick question for you. Have you ever seen the movie Hidden Figures? You know, the story of a team of African-American women who served a vital role in NASA during the early years of the US space program. Yeah, that one. While this episode isn't about that, we have some not so hidden figures here of our own at Wheeler, the people who play a vital role in the church's operations. You'll see some of them today. But before we get into that, I wanted to give a special shout out to a certain not so hidden figure, and that is the Communication Corp. They are a group of individuals who make church services and any production here at Wheeler happen. You won't see them today because, well, they're here with me. Hey guys. But I can assure you that the teams you'll meet today are just as special. Let's go meet them now. Okay, everyone. So I'm with one of our hidden figures, the facilities team. This is Deacon Cosby, okay? Tell us what you do, Deacon Cosby. Hey, sis, how you doing? I'm good, how are good, you? Very good, very good. <laughs> so um, I give leadership to the facilities team um, and we are just, uh, we're excited. One, to um, um, first of all, have a job. Secondly, to do what we do. Uh, and we literally just um, steward this property, okay. this campus. Steward this property. Yeah, we, 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 we steward this campus and we are, um, we're, uh, grateful, mm -hmm. excited about the job. Uh, we do, uh, we make sure the place is clean. We make sure that the place is clean. You know, one of the biggest things for me is bathrooms. I got a big deal yes. about bathrooms, yes. right? Me too. And for me, if the bathroom isn't clean, nine times out of 10, the kitchen isn't clean. Period. Right? So it's, it's, um, it's imperative that we uh, just make sure uh, our place is clean. Okay, so where are we at right now? This is one of your spots. So you we're in the pastoral suite. Okay. And the pastoral suite typically is, of course, it's everybody's job. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of our, one of our facility team members mm -hmm. uh, really takes ownership and pride in this space. Okay. Uh, Miss Linda, Miss Linda. Hey, Linda. And she's in here now, of course, yeah. doing what she does, and uh, just kind of making sure that you know, of course pastor is, is good, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, um, you know, pastor is, is, is very, um, uh, very humble when it comes to her being in here and mm -hmm. he kind of leaves out sometimes and allow her to do what she does. That's nice. Uh, and of course, you know, she got her sidekick with her, Carl. He gonna always <laughs> make sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna all make, always make sure that um, uh, Linda's good. You know, we gonna always make sure she's good because uh, again, she takes care of pastor. Um, right. Now, how long has Linda been here? Linda has been here, what, three years? Okay. Three years. Been, Linda has been working with us for three years. I think Carl has been with us for five six. years, six years. Six years. Yep. And um, um, we've, um, you know, we've, we've really kind of still trying to piece it together. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, uh, this additional, the campus, yeah. the addition to the campus has been, you know, somewhat challenging. Yeah. But um, we've, we always seem to pull it out. Okay. Okay, so now we're in the cathedral. This is where worship takes place. Now tell me, what are, what are some things that you do to keep this space clean for us? So, you know, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, all of those big things, it really changed us. It, it really got us to think mm -hmm. differently, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, of course, People were um, wearing masks, not wearing masks. Yeah. We really did enforce mask wearing. Mm -hmm. So having said that, we also had to make some changes in how we clean. Right. So we were disinfecting, wiping down all of the pews, wiping down all of the flat surfaces, all of the things that could be touched. Yeah. We and were we making see sure. all in between services yeah. going through yeah. each pew. Yeah. Yeah. And we were making sure that that happened just because, you know, of course, uh, we were fortunate enough where nobody on staff really got sick. Right. Nobody, we didn't have to shut down um, the campus. Uh, we didn't make the news, those right. kinds of right. things, right? So uh, it was really important for me and those persons that um, um, give leadership to me that we make sure that uh, we were clean and sanitized. Nice, nice. Okay, so now that we're in the atrium, okay. We actually haven't spoken about event setup. I see we're set up right now for an event, but y'all also help us out with that. So tell me about that. 
So as you know, we are a busy church. Absolutely. And, and it's always something going on, which is cool. You know, it, job security, right? <laughs> uh, it ensures that we get paid, which yeah. is which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. So tonight, uh, Thursday night, that we're, we're having um, young adults is doing Black Soiree, something in black uh, re with resistance. Oh, and, gathering um, in black. Gathering mm -hmm. in black. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, yeah, we set it up and we try to get ahead of things. We really try our best uh, to be proactive with things and try to, you know, try to get get ahead of the things yeah. because it could all come at one time right. sometimes. And that could be, you know, kind of for a, for a job like this. How many of your team members do you need? Two, three. Oh, OK. Uh, I, I think we we are really um, put in a space where, you know, it's we've learned how to do things and do it, you know, good and quick. Yeah. You know, because the stage, the chairs, the tables, let's get it clean. Right. And let's no, go on to the next thing. I don't know if y'all have ever been to, well, if you're watching this, I'm sure you have been to a Wheeler Avenue event, but at the end of the event, they are ready. They're locked and loaded, trying yeah. to set everything or yeah. break everything down for us. So y'all yeah. are quick yeah. with it for real. Yeah, it's important. It's important yeah. for us, you know, that we, cause it's on to the next thing. Yeah. Specifically Saturdays and it's oh, time yeah. for Sunday. You know, every day on Saturdays, we're preparing for Sunday. That yeah. we're laser focused on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Where do you yeah. want to go to next? Uh, let's go to the CE. Okay, great. Okay, so we're at the CEC. That is the Christian Education Complex. Christian Education Complex. Okay, yes. what takes place in this area? So uh, a gamut of things take place. You know, we've had we've been fortunate enough to build, have classroom space. So we have different uh, events that take place, mm -hmm. different uh, Sunday school classes. Mm -hmm. Throughout the week, we have classes that master life class that goes on. Uh, it has to be set up, has to be clean. For the most part, the classrooms are already set up. Uh, but uh, of course, you have pre persons who want something different. Right. Um, hey, Jermichael. But to sanitize the space. This on is one the, of our new team members, Jermichael. Yeah, it's one of my <laughs> new guys, Jermichael. And of course, uh, Miss D'Angela. Yeah. She is uh, uh, excellent. She's always been, came in excellent. So. Um, yeah, so um, biggest thing for us, again, is sanitation. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're sanitized. The classrooms are sanitized, even if um, four or five people, mm -hmm. you know, you never really know. Yeah. And again, we've been fortunate where we have not um, had a breakout. Yeah, uh, it's a big love deal. that. So we deal. spoke a little bit about your pandemic mm -hmm. additions. Now tell me about how your team has grown since the pandemic, because I'm, I'm sure they so, have. So yes, we did. We, we, we added an additional three people okay. uh, during the pandemic. Okay. Uh, actually four, I'm sorry. Four people during the pandemic. Jermichael, D'Angela, Paul, and uh, Jalen. Okay. Jalen. And Jalen and Cosmos came at the same time, so maybe Me Cosmos five, as yeah. well. But yeah, it was it was really important. And we knew that we would have to add more yeah. just because of the additional campus space. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great thing. It's yeah. been a great thing for us to to have additional people, to train additional people, to know that um, for me, I, my biggest thing is if you have keys, mm -hmm. you're responsible. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest thing so for true. me. So it's, it's, it's a big deal uh, for us to have keys yeah and thank you for taking it seriously yeah, yeah. absolutely appreciate that absolutely. okay absolutely. so we have an important spot that must stay clean at all times absolutely i mean everything must stay clean at all times but this one especially where are we going next to the nursery to and the nursery. we have a we have a, a a senior staff member who is just nuts about the nursery all so right let's we do have it. to make sure that the nursery is clean all right sounds good Okay, so we're entering the space called the nursery. Yeah, <laughs> this is the nursery. And, um, you know, at any given time, ministries, well, before I say any of that, we got to oh, put these on, you know what I mean? We have to okay. put these on and make sure that, uh, because Miss Kim may come out her office just going <laughs> nuts. Nah, I'm just joking. She <laughs> she really does uh, have a heart for, for our babies, right? Yeah. And we make sure that they are really taken care of. Pastor Cosby's biggest thing is we're intentionally intergenerational, Absolutely. right? So uh, anything that the babies want or anything that the seniors need, if you notice, they get it, True. right? They True. get it. Uh, but yeah, this is this is a space, it is triple the size of what it used to be uh, in the CLC. And uh, nice. we made sure to make uh, every accommodation for those nurseries, but, um, 
you know, one of the biggest things with babies is they're always sick. Yeah. Or right. runny nose or right. those kinds of things or touching everything, right? So, of course, our team needs to ensure that we are, uh, we're wiping down, we're spraying, we're sanitizing, we're staying clean, and uh, uh, we're doing it again and again and again. Uh, on Sundays, we do it once after, and then we do it again, mm -hmm. uh, a thorough cleaning on Monday. Okay. Every Monday, we are shampooing this carpet. Oh, okay. Every Monday, we're shampooing Good this carpet. Know. We move things from one side to the other side. We shampoo it. This whole wing, really, is just it's cleaned yeah. uh, very much. So, I mean, not that we do anything different anywhere right. else, but we, we certainly pay a, attention Absolutely. to to what we're doing in here. Now um, that's one of the new guys you were talking about, Paul. That is Paul. That's Paul. <laughs> Paul, one of our new guys. Hey, that's Paul. that's the OG. You know what I mean? He's a <laughs> he's a he's a good brother, and he he makes sure that uh, he actually closes us out now. He's closing down the shop more oh, okay. more often than not, um, and um, he's done a really great job. Now, yeah. Linda, you're part of this this area too. Yeah, and she's like Sabwa Fair. She's everywhere, uh, as well as Carl. Carl. So anywhere Linda goes, Carl goes. Yeah, pretty much, okay. pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> and Calvin, I, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I did not mention Calvin. Calvin is our senior okay. statesman. And uh, he is, uh, he's given, I think he's been here 15, 15 years, 14, wow. 15 years. And uh, uh, he's excellent. He just happens to be off today. Calvin, we missed uh, you. Yeah, Calvin Watson. Uh, I'm wearing girl. his shirt. Yep. <laughs> I don't you. know if y'all noticed, I'm wearing a facilities team shirt. Yeah. Check yeah. it out. Check the gear, check the gear. Yep. Yeah, yeah, well, thank yeah. you so much You're for being welcome. part of this with me. Yeah, thank I appreciate you. learning about the facilities team and everything that y'all do. Yeah. So thank, thank you for you. having us. I appreciate that very much of so. Of course, thank All you. Right. All right. Okay, everyone. So to continue our Hidden Figures episode, we have Mr. Ford here from the First Touch Ministry. You're the leader of the First Touch Ministry, That's right? That's correct. Now, if you don't know about the First Touch Ministry, this is the segment for you. I'm really excited because we actually have a golf cart here and he's gonna take me on a little ride along. We're gonna figure out your routes, where you can park, all that good stuff. And then while we get to know the First Touch Ministry, you ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. Okay, so how many First Touch Ministry members do you have that volunteer have with you? Possibly, we have about 25 on the list. Mm -hmm. We have probably about 12 to 14 committed ones yeah. that Sunday after Sunday participate and come in and do the operational ministry that we have allocated for First Touch Ministry at Wheeler. What is the First Touch Ministry? What do y'all do? Is it just parking lot? No, so we do, we, we do just about everything that has to do with the moving parts of picking up people, mm -hmm. dropping them off, mm -hmm. to assisting the handicaps, mm -hmm. ones that are having uh, mobility to walk from a long distance. Uh, and so believe it or not, we even go as far as sometimes some of the members get caught with uh, keys locked in. Oh, what? Flat top. You guys we help change. with that? We do all of that. Oh, wow. What a ministry. Y'all yeah. do so, it all. Uh, and that's why it's so we're so honored and grateful that we have that opportunity to do this at Wheeler yeah. Avenue. Yeah, and we're grateful for you. you make everything run so smooth. Absolutely. So how do Sundays go for you? It's just what's so, the setup process? So the what setup, time do you get here? So I usually get here between uh, 545, 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, it starts off with getting the preparation of our trolleys, getting them set up. Okay. Getting our uh, van set up to run for our U of H. By the time between 6.30, 6.45, our guys start showing up. Mm. And I'm able to appoint each individual to their to the route in which we are able to take care of doing the operation for the first and second service. We do have a lot of, we do have a lot of officers, I mean, I'm sorry, we do have a lot of um, First Touch members that do both service. Okay. And then we have some that stick and do first service or uh, one service, either the first service or second service. Okay. Yeah. So right here, as you see, we started down here. We we have uh, parking here on the roof side. The other side here is on the body side. So we kind of watch and monitor the parking and making sure that everybody is able to get in to park at a good place. Uh, do you know off the top of your head how many parking spots are on campus? 
No, I have to go back and get back get with you on that day because okay. I don't want to put a number that's right. not correct. Right. Right. But um, there are probably about if I remember serving correctly, rather right about two hundred on this side. Two hundred on this side, and then probably the same on the other. Well, yeah. no, that parking lot no, was bigger. No, this will be a little bit, little bit yeah. bigger, probably about three, three fifty. I think it okay. is somewhere in there. Yeah. Nice. And then That's, with the parking lot expansions, did you have to expand your team to accommodate that as well? Say it again. Whenever we uh, expanded the parking lots, did you ever have to uh, expand your team or were you yes, we had, free? Yes, we, we had to expand the team tremendous. And when we did that, individual took on a more of a, uh, a larger task. Larger task. Yeah. What, what changes did you make besides expanding the team? What changes did you make whenever we So expanded? when we first started off with First Touch Ministry, we were just basically uh, directing the traffic to oh, the parking lot. Right. And so as time, you know, progressed into the years, they purchased the golf carts. And so we was able to help with the senior citizen and handicap. Mm -hmm. And then when that, uh, when the cathedral came in, they purchased the trolleys. Mm -hmm. And then that's when there was a shift mm -hmm. in the uh, operation of First Touch Ministry. It's good to a whole nother level. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful day. I'm happy we're doing this today. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> but y'all yeah, are absolutely. out here, rain or shine. Rain, And we shining, appreciate that. Yes. It could be snowing, raining, whatever. Freezing. Have, all, we've, and we've encountered all of it in the last 10 years. The Charlies, do they have heaters? If I'm not no, mistaken, oh, okay. No, no heaters and no AC. Okay, yeah. but it's, it feels so like yes. climate or acclimated yeah. to the weather. That's good. Okay, where, where to next? So we're gonna go on the broader side of the uh, parking here. Excuse Ooh. us. Could you tell us a little bit of how the ministry started, the history of it? Yes, so uh, from what I understand, uh, there was Introns, and I'm not going to start calling names because yeah. I probably will miss someone. But in terms that Pastor Cosby started put together, and I think he had a vision. And during that time, the young ladies that was under the intern, they came up with a plan because the way I understood that Pastor Cosby had a vision uh -huh. for this type of a ministry. What was the original plan, if you remember? No, I don't know uh, what the original plan was. Uh, that has never been uh, discussed discussed with me on that on that level. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is that Pastor saw a need to help with the uh, the elders and the seniors mm -hmm. that was parking into the uh, parking lot mm -hmm. that was trying to get out of their vehicles and walk up to the sanctuary at the time. Mm -hmm. And so the young ladies came up with this plan and concept and he looked at it and next time we knew it was birth. Right. Yeah. How long has First Touch been around? 10 years. Ten Today, years. the first Sunday in March of uh, 2013. Oh, yeah. and we didn't even plan that. Look at no. that. Look how that happened. Yeah. And today we're celebrating 10 years. Wow. God has blessed us. And so, like I said, you know, our pastor, pastor had a, um, he had a vision. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't even see it. Yeah. You know, we didn't see it. So he, God placed it in his spirit and uh, he was able to uh, put it together. And here at First Touch is yeah. working and doing what we love doing is that serving. One whole decade. Serving. Yes, one whole decade. What are you doing to, to God celebrate? To God be the glory. Amen. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. yes, yes. What yes. are you doing to celebrate today? What are y'all doing? So, you got some cake and punch? So what we're doing, <laughs> we, um, we are we're definitely celebrating. Uh, we are going out. Uh, we have a place that we meet. We've been doing it for the last 10 years. Our brothers always get together every second Sunday mm -hmm. after church. And we'll go out to a restaurant and oh, we'll just kick it and you know just celebrate and, bonding yeah yes and so we're going to do that today after church uh celebrating uh 10 years i love that y'all do that that y'all do yeah. team bonding oh yes and the beauty of that the beauty of the first touch ministry is that we have such a strong knit brothers yeah that uh that understand the importance of fellowship yeah and so we've been able to do that and we have been able to incorporate our families, being our spouses oh, and our kids. And, and so we do things outside 
of the church. What so a that means ministry. a lot for this ministry. And you know what? When you do bonding, like experiences like that, it helps you work well together. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No wonder if her touch is so successful. Yes. Wow. I love and so uh, to God be the glory that he has kept us. Yeah. He has kept us. Uh, and it's been, it's, it has been, we have seen, I'll say this, we have seen the good with this because there have been some good brothers that come through, work for a few years, and because of job transfer mm -hmm. amount, they had to leave. But we have had an awesome uh, turn out of brothers that love to serve yeah. and became a part of the First Touch Ministry. Yeah. And I thank God for that uh, every time I get, because it's, it's, it's an honor, it really is, it really is. And I love that you know who to give the praise to. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. and that, and that absolutely. helps your blessings yes. flow yes. through yes. your ministry. Yes. And not only that, when other people can see, especially the men, can see what this ministry is about. Yeah. It's very unappealing because they want to be a part of it. And believe it or not, we have a gentleman that's getting ready to come on board that's a school principal. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this for a reason. Mm -hmm. That's a school principal. Because we had brothers that was reading him every morning for the past few months. Yeah. He reached out to me and said, Brother, you know, I want to be a part of this first touch wow. ministry. But he said, I want to challenge you on something. I don't want to drive. I don't want to direct traffic. Mm -hmm. I just want to be a part of the first touch to greet oh, okay. people that come on the parking lot. Yes. And I said, brother, come on, let's yeah. make it happen. And so he's coming today on our on 10th year anniversary for the first service, wow. I'm sorry, for the second service. And so I, he's already here. As a matter of fact, he just called me and I told him I had to get with him later. Yeah. But to God be the glory. Amen. Yeah, wow. God be the glory. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at right now? So right now we're on the larger side. We're dealing with from the green A, B, and then we look on the other side is the purple A, B, and C. Uh, and then on the other side of, of Bellagio, of the parking lot, you see we'll be in the red A, B, and C. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I know you said there's parking over at UH. We just started doing that, or? So we've been doing that probably for the last, I say probably for the last couple of years now. Okay. If not longer. Okay. Uh, was that a has, partnership with U of H? Yes, okay. that is a partnership with U of H. That is correct. Nice. So let me go. So that way you won't get a ticket if you park over there. That is correct. That is correct. And so they have uh, the in the contract and negotiating with by Reverend Johnson. They have been a designated area where we are able to utilize this uh, section yeah. for each Sunday for both services. Okay. Yeah. They were so gracious enough. You know, I I am a coog. I graduated oh, from U of H. Look at so you, look go at you, look at you, go coog. We know we're coog. a little gracious and. Come on, man. Come on through. This is the route you'll take to go to U of H to pick up people. Yes, How do your members know where, like, where their zones? So we have one area park that's close by the police station and by the stadium, to where when they get out of the vehicles, we try to have vehicles stay mm. and waiting for them. Gotcha. Time they pull up, as you see these two white vans parked here, okay. they'll stay and waiting for people to drive up. Now those white vans, are they new? Yes. Newer? Yes, okay. yes, yes. I was going to say, I've never really seen them that often. So, actually, the church is renting them right now. Okay. So, we get them, we rent them out every weekend. Okay. Yeah, so we do on that seat. Headed to U of H with the uh, crew member. Whenever your uh, ministry members come in on Sundays, 10 four, come on, come on back. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I need to talk to him too. 10 four. Sorry about that. That's okay. That was funny. On Sundays, how do your ministry members know um, where they're stationed? Do you give them like zoning, or they just kind of rotate? How does that work? How well, do you uh, operate on Sundays? You saw, you're speaking as far as my guy, my uh, members. Oh man, they got this blocked off. The members of you of uh, first touch, mm -hmm. first touch. The ones who so are helping with the I park. have certain uh, drivers that I designate to you, babe. Oh, okay. So they know the responsibilities, whether it's driving the vans. Send for, thank you, sir. They'll know which area they need to, uh, uh, yeah, he's with uh, Nate on, on Roof Street. They should be coming across. So this is the area this is this is the area here that we park, starting from over here 
in the front, mm -hmm. all, all the way, way back, wow. all the way back here. What a blessing. And it goes to where it lands off, I'm sorry, it stops right here. Okay, where that light yeah, pole is. Right. Okay. And there, there'll be people over here kind of showing members where to go. Yes, yes we do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nate, just, I mean, I'm sorry, Brian, just give me a uh, few minutes when you get through with uh, coming through. As soon as I finish up with U of H, I'll run over and get the shirt. Uh, that was a bad timing for me to jump up and stop because they had the mic on me. So, what we try to do So I'm going to give you a little example of what's going on here. Okay. This is not normal. This is not the norm right here. Okay. Because they have a XL game at U of A. Oh, yeah. And it's a late game, but they want to control the traffic. Mm -hmm. And so they shut this part down. So they're causing us to go out this way and come back out. Oh, yeah. But go, usually you would go out that we'll way. We'll go out this way. Right. That's so I'm just trying to give you a little, a little, uh, lead way of yeah. how the operation is done Sunday for Sunday when we're out uh, picking up and dropping off here at U of H. Okay. And as you see, is that uh, one of our vans is coming down here oh, from yes. across, yeah. Now that one's air conditioned. Yes, that is correct, <laughs> that is correct. The vans was a nice addition. Oh, absolutely. How late do you all stay after service, after the 1130 service? Oh, we, we're the first ones here, the last one to leave. Yeah. I'll just leave it, I'll just sum it up that way. really close the parking lot down. Now, is she working new ways? Wow, 10-4. Okay, we'll make it happen. So, so I guess I'll let, I'll let the officer know we start shutting down. Hello. Now on game days like this, because the games are always going to be happening at U of H, um, do, how do you get into, because sometimes they make you pay for parking over here if you're staying for the game, so how do you So the negotiation that Pastor uh, Reverend Johnson has with the director of the parking lot here, is that we'll know ahead of time there's always pre-planning. Gotcha. And so he'll give us heads up how to navigate through that situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so it's been, and they've been very, very, very on point with that. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't, it's, at times there have been where, um, um, some things or uh, some difficulty challenges may right. pop up, but it's nothing that we can get in and work through and think, oh, we have a good, uh, relationship with the officers here. Oh, we can go to the police department oh, and get things done. So yeah, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great partnership. We love really, that yeah. community. Yeah. Now, as a member coming up on like a game day, and I'm going to church, do I just let the uh, parking attendant just let them know, like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just going to church? Okay. Yes, that is so correct. that way, you don't have yeah. to pay. You know, you, since you do so much, mm -hmm. or since everyone, mm -hmm. all your members of right. First Church, First Church, do so much on every Sunday, how do you how do you keep your cool whenever it gets frustrating? Because I know it does. So we have to start off with prayer. When That's I leave you. home, when I wake up in the morning, uh, if my wife is traveling with me, one of the things is that I have to have my quiet time. Absolutely. Because I have to prepare myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, because it's a challenge dealing with people with different personalities and attitudes because you don't know what issues that they're dealing with Absolutely. when they put over in the parking lot. Absolutely. So you have to be able to know how to address that mm -hmm. when that occurs. And so that's how I'm able to keep. Now, has I been graded off? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you're human. Yeah, I'm human. And so what that has given me the assurance to understand that God is in control and he's still doing what he is capable of doing is keeping us yeah. together yeah. and being able to understand that he's in control. Yeah. And so once I recognize that and understand that, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I really am. I'm good. So 
that's how I'm able to, to oh, maintain I love that. that. It's important. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I know. We both need radio. I know. Brian just don't. He wants you. He wants you to be introduced. This, yeah, that's this is really not necessary. This is. This is. William, see how? See how? See what I told you. This, yeah. is, this is what I have to deal with. This is William <laughs> Kemp. This is our first president of the First Touch Ministry. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. William Kemp, mm -hmm. first president of the First Touch Ministry. However, you remember I was telling you about the interns? Okay. His wife, Reverend Jamel Kemp, mm -hmm. was part of that process. Oh, wow. And I'm going to let him, William Kemp, yeah. give you the names of these individuals because he can say a lot better than I can because oh, he was part of them. Oh, you can remember. <laughs> well, uh, Get your mic on. Actually, from what I remember, it was Jamel, as he said, and Andrea. Andrea Tucker. Okay. Andrea Tucker. And there was one other, I cannot remember. Uh, Reverend, Reverend uh, Tamla. Tamla. Or, okay. Reverend Tamla. Forget the last name. I can't remember it either at the moment, but essentially this is what took place. They told me that there were going to be some people coming in to talk about this new ministry and they were looking for to pick a leader out of a group of guys. Well, it turns out that was uh, chicanery because I was the only guy invited. So yeah, <laughs> see, hence the term chicanery. So it happened, we took off and we had faithful brothers join. Most yes. of them are still here, ironically yes. enough. Ford, Brian, Nate, Thomas, and Thomas Durst, yeah. Uh, Curtis Faltry. Yeah. And that's what we did. Yeah. Whatever was necessary. We pulled cars out of mud. We fixed flats. That's what we, he was saying. You know, yeah. yeah. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Right. We were taking people like have, uh, for, for some reason or another, Mr. Metro. Mm -hmm. We had to take, take them home. Wow. We had to triple A on our own on cars. Our, on Brian our own did that cars. recently. Yeah. Wow. So, so we do it all. Yeah. Well, does need. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I will say this, this, this church has adjusted to us quite Absolutely. admirably oh, because we used that. to be met with harsh words yes. often. Mm -hmm. often. often. Not yeah. it's, a, it's a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave since I have a face made for radio. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Kemp. Right. Love you, my brother. That's, I think that's the perfect way to end it, honestly. Thank you so much You're for taking welcome. us around introducing us to your team and i love how intentional you are about the work you do and it's trickled down to your whole team and they you can see that they truly enjoy working with yeah. you and just working together yeah. and doing what they do and we appreciate and it. i can't do it i couldn't do it without them we really appreciate good. it yeah. I mean, to god be the glory i'm so thankful yeah. truly well thank you thank I you mr it. ford I love, it. I love it i love it i love it Thank you so much for tuning in today and thank you to all the teams here who serve at Wheeler Avenue. That is all we have for today. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Wheeler Avenue BC and I will see you next time on the Avenue. Bye.